Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks to the award committee for, for the award. Um, I am Eduardo De Benedetti. Welcome to this uh, talk about evading black box classifiers without breaking eggs. This is joint work with Nicolas Scalini from Google DeepMind and from my advisor, Florian. Um, I guess at this point, you, you all know that thanks to adversarial examples, we can make speak fly, meaning that we can add a perturbation to a given image uh, which we craft in a way that a target classifier is going to misclassify the image. So in this case, the peak is going to be misclassified as an airliner. Um, this is uh, established to be easy if we have white box, white, white box access to the model via uh, projected gradient descent. Uh, but um, uh, what happens if we do not have access to the, to the gradient? So if the model is actually a black box. Um, and for instance, we take uh, the example of uh, uploading a not safe for work image on a platform um, that wants to filter out uh, unsafe content. Um, again, for instance, not safe for work uh, content. And um, in this specific case, we, cannot, we don't have access to the gradient. We can interact with the system, and we can only observe the label that's assigned uh, by, by the system. And uh, we want to make sure that our attack works, and so we cannot, for instance, use a transfer attack. Um, and uh, yeah, so we want to upload this image, and what's going to happen is that um, the filter that's being used by the platform is going to classify the image as not safe. And in particular, if we take, for instance, the example of Facebook, we're going to observe that the post has been removed. So basically, this is what, uh, how we know that the label assigned by the, by the system, by the model, is not safe. If instead we upload a safe image, like a cute puppy, uh, the puppy is going to upload it, and we're going to get tons of likes. Um, and now, uh, there are attacks, as, as actually already mentioned earlier by um, Anshuman, uh, that work in the label-only setting, so where we can only observe uh, the label assigned by, by the model. And uh, this dates back to 2019. And usually, these attacks start by um, taking a perturbation for which the image is classified as safe, and then I, I, I iteratively optimize this uh, perturbation to minimize it. And uh, starting from, uh, and they usually start from an interpolation between an unsafe image and a safe image. And what's going to happen is that the model is queried. Um, we, for, for instance, here we are interpolating with, between the origin emoji and the and the and the and the puppy. And for instance, this image is classified as safe, and so nothing happens. Um, then we move forward when looking for basically one of the main operations that are being done by these uh, by these attacks is measuring the distance between the current uh, image and the, the decision boundary. And basically, they follow uh, the direction until an image is classified as, um, as not safe. And uh, yeah, for instance, in this case, um, the image is classified as, as not safe. Uh, one thing to note is that sometimes these images are very noisy. So they don't necessarily look either safe or unsafe to the human eye. And so, for instance, this image could be classified as safe, or this image could be classified as not safe. But neither of them are clearly one or the other. Uh, so what, what's important here is that we're not, um, it's not necessary to know what the, what, what the ground truth is. So Facebook is not trying to detect that it's being uh, attacked with, the, with an evasion attack. What they care is that users don't upload um, unsafe images to their platform. And, um, and so these attacks do um, several, uh, several queries and then use these queries usually to get some form of gradient estimation, uh, move along the gradient until uh, they get an adversarial example that has a small enough perturbation that the actual image is still visible. Um, now, uh, usually the way these, um, the way these attacks uh, work, uh, th so the way these attacks are evaluated is by counting the number of queries that are being uh, issued to, to the model. Um, without really caring whether the image is classified as safe or not safe, they just count uh, this number. And uh, attacks have gotten actually more and more efficient, starting from the very first one, um, binary attack, all the way to hop, skip, jump. Um, they, they, got, they, got pretty, they got pretty efficient. But what actually happens in reality is a bit different. So as mentioned earlier, um, we query the model. And uh, when an image gets, gets classified as safe, nothing happens. But if an image gets, gets classified as unsafe, not only like we as attackers, we observe this notification from Facebook that the image gets deleted. But what Facebook does behind the scene is flagging our account. And uh, we go on with our attack, nothing happens. But again, we, we do another query that is classified as unsafe, and we get flagged a second time. And we continue our attack, and we'll get flagged seven times. And after seven times, our account gets banned. And uh, yeah, we wonder, well, why is this happening? Well, we take a look at, um, at the policies that uh, Meta uh, has for um, user, user safety and like how they handle these cases. And indeed, after only seven, they call them strikes, uh, what we call flags. 
um, a user gets banned for a day, and after only 10 uh, strikes, which means only three strikes more, a user gets banned for 30 days. At this point, an attacker can do two things. Either uh, create or buy new accounts if the attack has to scale, or wait. Uh, which is, of course, a very legitimate strategy, but this, this introduces um, an asymmetric cost between queries that are not flagged, which come for free because we can upload up to 1,000 images at the same time on Facebook if they are not flagged, so it's, they, they basically come for free, and uh, images that are flagged, which come at a cost which is either uh, mon monetary, because we have to buy accounts, or in terms of time. And so we argue that the current metric of only counting um, the overall number of queries is not complete. And we should actually not only consider this metric, but also consider as a metric that um, the, the number of queries that are flagged throughout the attack. Um, and then we take a look at uh, existing attacks and, uh, and we wonder how can we, how can we make them stealthier uh, in, in the sense that how can we make them issue less uh, flagged queries. And uh, we do that by looking at how these attacks work. And then, as I mentioned earlier, one of the main operations they do is looking for the decision boundary. And they do that uh, with a binary search, which if one only, uh, if one only um, cares for the overall number of queries, the optimal strategy, uh, but it's going to do around half of the queries that are on the bad side of the boundary. So we don't really want that. And so we, we change, we swap these um, binary searches with line searches. In this way, we're guaranteed that only one um, flag query is going to be issued, um, of course, at the cost of more um, non flag queries. And this reminded us of the egg dropping problem where basically one is given a building of, uh, of n stories and uh, a fixed number of eggs, and you have to establish uh, from which floor eggs are going to start breaking when we drop them from, from that floor. And, uh, and we want to do this with, the, with uh, not using more than the, the given amount of eggs, but also we want to minimize uh, the number of drops we, we make. And in particular, in the case considered earlier, here we, we consider only uh, the case where we can break one, uh, one egg only. But for instance, in the paper, we also consider the case where we can break two eggs. And one can generalize to multiple eggs depending on the, on the use case. But do we actually manage to break less eggs? Um, and indeed, in this, so in this plot, we show um, how the perturbation size reduces uh, with the amount of bad of flag queries that we make. Or of, cor of course, we want a perturbation to be the smallest possible with the least number of flag queries um, that we can. And uh, in this case, we consider, in the, in the plot we show, one out of the four attacks that we consider in our, in our work. And, uh, and yeah, indeed, uh, we are already swapping uh, binary searches with line searches with other tweaks that we make for hyperparameters, for instance, um, our attacks um, are stealthier and issue less uh, flagged, flagged queries. Um, this is, uh, yeah, this example is on, um, on ResNet and on, um, and, and on ImageNet. And uh, yeah, as, as, I mentioned, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, we also unfortunately do more um, uh, queries overall uh, by actually a lot more, four order of magnitudes more for, for this attack. Um, because uh, again, moving from a binary search to a line search, uh, that, that, that's, what, that's what happens. And uh, sounds like a big problem for orders, for orders of magnitude, but remember that, uh, for instance, in the case of Facebook, after only seven flag queries, our, accounts get, our account gets banned for, for a day and 10 queries for one month, while we can upload up to 1,000 images at, a, at the same time as part of an album. So uh, there's also a very big difference in, in, the, in the cost, so the asymmetry is very high. And indeed, if you look at a real-world example, um, we attack the Google uh, Moderation Filter API, which is an API that Google offers to Google Cloud customers to, to filter contents that are uploaded to their website. So, uh, of course, we cannot attack Facebook for ethical reasons. We cannot just go and upload um, not safe for work images on Facebook. So this is the closest we get. This API is meant to receive such images because users, uh, because platforms should use this, uh, this API to filter the images they receive. Um, so we, we attack this, um, this, um, this uh, this API using a subset of images in ImageNet that, is class that are classified as not safe for work by this, by this model. And, um, and, we, and we look at, uh, again, uh, how our selfie attack works against uh, the original one. And what happens is indeed that uh, our attacks does less than half the queries uh, than the original attack, which means in practice it's gonna be less than half the cost. And what's interesting here is that, yeah, so uh, this is to achieve a perturbation of 32 over 255 in L infinity, but due to how this specific attack work, which is, uh, works, which is uh, called uh, rays, uh, it's very clear that there is a perturbation in the image uh, to the right, but you can also clearly see 
the origin behind. So it's definitely a failure mode uh, for, would be a failure mode, like would be a failure if, if someone was able to upload um, this image on, on Facebook. And, um, and uh, another interesting thing is that with, uh, with uh, neither attack, so uh, the original one or the stealthy version, we never hit, uh, to, to reach 32 over 255 as a perturbation, we don't hit the, the query limit of 1,000 um, images, like overall images that one can upload on Facebook. So the problem that I've shown here, for instance, for this specific use case is not really a problem. Um, so so far uh, we've been uh, we've been talking about image moderation filters, but are not the only moderation filters that are out there. Especially recently, with the uh, with the rise of large language models, people um, I, there's a uh, using moder a moderation filter is uh, is uh, is suggested as a solution against, for instance, jailbreak attacks. And OpenAI offers a moderation uh, API for for uh, the OpenAI API platform. And uh, there are already attacks. Um, one is from uh, two, my, my two co-authors and, and other people uh, that target such moderation filters and try to evade them and work in a black box way in a query in a query based uh, fashion, um, which uh, which means that um, if uh, if OpenAI were to adopt a similar policy as Facebook's or someone using the OpenAI API were to adopt a policy similar to Facebook's, uh, then the same met, like when evaluating these black box at attacks against uh, text models. Um, again, you shouldn't only count of the overall number of queries, but also the, the queries that are classified as uh, with the flagged uh, class. So to, to conclude, uh, the main message of our work is that uh, when working on, uh, on black box attacks that are in the, in the label only setting, we should really uh, consider not only the overall number of queries that are issued to the, to the system, but, uh, but also the queries that are classified as flagged, because for some applications, like content moder moderation filters, um, this is actually something that matters a lot because we have an, is an asymmetry in the cost between the, the queries that are flagged and the queries that are not flagged. Uh, moreover, we showed that it's possible to stealthify um, existing, uh, existing attacks, and this but ho however, this comes at the cost um, of, of a higher number of overall, overall queries, which may not always be a problem depending on the application. And finally, we also argue um, that, yeah, this is uh, still relevant, is not relevant only for the image domain, but is also relevant for the language models domain for attacks against uh, large language models. Um, on our GitHub repository, we set up a small uh, leaderboard uh, where, we, where we hope people we work to, to make attacks stealthier. We actually already got uh, someone who submitted um, a stealthy version of uh, an already existing attack uh, to ho hoping that people will actually optimize for, for this metric. Uh, thanks a lot for, for listening. I'm now happy to take any questions.